Hey, so in this video, we're going to talk about what an ancillary probate is, or rather, what's the procedure necessary when someone dies living in one state owning real estate in another state. So as you might imagine, that happens from time to time when people pass away living in one state and they own in another state a home, some farmland, vacation property. And so there's, there's certain procedures that have to be followed and what's called an ancillary probate is necessary in that other state when they own real estate. And all of this is really important because when the heirs ultimately decide they want to sell the property, when they find a buyer for that property, the buyer is going to uh, hire typically lawyers to make sure that that buyer is going to get clear title to the property. And if all this procedure wasn't handled properly, when the original owner died, there's all kinds of title problems are going to come up and it could really delay or kill the sale. All right, so let me give you an example of how this works. Let's say, let's call him Jim. Jim lived, lives or lived in Texas. And Jim had, uh, you know, when Jim died, Jim owned a number of assets. You know, he had his home in Texas. He may have even had some other real estate in Texas. He had vehicles. He had investment accounts at um, brokerage firms. Some of those firms were in Texas, some were not. He had bank accounts in some different places. But he also owned some property, some real estate in Louisiana. So I'm going to give you the, um, you know, what happens when somebody dies in another state but owned property in Louisiana. And so if your situation is def different, you can check with maybe somebody like me and in that state where that real estate is located. So that's what Jim's, Jim's situation was. He died. And so the first thing that Jim's family does, not the first thing, but maybe a, a couple of weeks after Jim dies, Jim's family starts to initiate um, the probate proceeding in Texas. So they hire a lawyer, they get with the lawyer, lawyer asks you know, for an inventory of all of the assets, all the heirs get together. Um, the family provides the lawyer with you know, all the records on all of the assets, including the Louisiana property and the Texas property and the investments and the bank accounts and the vehicles. And then the lawyer does what lawyers do in a probate is prepare lots of court documents and inventories of assets and, uh, and, and debts and values and, and submits all of the paperwork for all of the heirs to sign different things. And the, and the lawyer doesn't include the Louisiana real estate on the inventory of assets in the in the probate estate and maybe some heirs kind of pick up on that and ask why or, or maybe not they discover it later but nonetheless rightfully so the texas lawyer doesn't include the louisiana real estate on the texas probates inventory of assets and so the texas probate gets complete all of jim's assets other than his Louisiana property, you know, the judge orders that those assets be transferred, let's say to Jim's wife, if that was the case, if that was what Jim's will said. And now there's still this piece of real estate in Louisiana. It's still in Jim's name. So what does the family have to do? Well, the family has to, quite frankly, get with somebody like me so we can do all of the paperwork necessary to get uh, Jim's Louisiana real estate transferred to Jim's wife. So what, what does that look like? Well, one of the first questions I'm going to ask Jim's family or Jim's wife when they do contact me about getting Jim's Louisiana property into Jim's wife's name is I'm going to ask them, what's that property worth? Because here in our state, and I know it, it is likely to be very different in many other states, there's a different procedure um, uh, based on the value of that Louisiana property. If it's worth more or less than $125,000, let's say that property, the Louisiana property is worth more than $125,000. So what we have to do is we have to do, you know, you could call it a, a full blown or, or kind of formal judicial probate process in Louisiana. So we have to get, um, the will that was admit, admitted to probate or, or the will that, that a Texas judge declared was a valid will. We've got to get that in its proper form. We've got to prepare all the court pleadings. We've got to submit it to the heirs and, um, 
and then you know we file that stuff uh, at the courthouse in the parish where that real estate is located and that paperwork makes its way up to a judge's office and a judge gets involved and a judge signs the appropriate orders ordering that uh, Jim's ownership interest in that property based on Jim's out-of-state will that we filed in the Louisiana probate, the judge will sign the order ordering that that real estate be transferred to Jim's wife. We get that order recorded in the real estate records of the parish where that property is located. And that's, that's what makes Jim's wife the new owner of the property. And so she might sell it in the future. Now she has clear title. She might continue to own it and pass away and it will go on to her heirs, perhaps under a similar procedure if she still lives in Texas when she passes away. So that's the ancillary probate. Now I mentioned a moment ago that um, if the value of Jim's Louisiana real estate is worth $125,000 or less, there is a somewhat simpler procedure that's required. Some people call it the, the small succession affidavit where we don't have to go through the, the formal judicial probate process, but there's still a lot of, of paperwork to be done. So when someone died living in another state, owned a piece of real estate in Louisiana that was worth less than $125,000. Now the lawyers and the family um, can prepare and complete these what's called affidavits. Show, and in those affidavits, among other things, it's gonna have a description of the property, it's gonna have the value of the property, it's gonna go have a, a statement showing who is entitled to inherit the property. And then attached to those affidavits, is going to be a certified copy of the will from Texas that a judge uh, declared was valid and, and, uh, and the probate order of that other state. Again, that order uh, that a judge signed uh, declaring that the Texas will was valid under you know, Texas law. And then we record those affidavits um, with the attachments in the conveyance records of the parish where that real estate or as we call it in Louisiana where that immovable property is located and that is what transfers the the ownership of the property from Jim's name in this case to Jim's wife's name so the the point I need to get across and the, and the most important point and and before I go into most important point let me just encourage you to hit the subscribe button while I think about it and the notification bell. That way you won't miss anything. If you've already subscribed to my channel, fantastic, perfect. You'll keep getting educated. And then just tune in every morning, 10 a.m. Central Time, more educational videos. So the most important point is to realize that when someone dies living in one state and they own real estate in another state, then um, there's going to be multiple probates required. Couple of exceptions to that. Let's say Jim, um, he had transferred that Louisiana real estate that he owned to an LLC that he owned. Now, technically when he died, he didn't own real estate. He owned an LLC that owned real estate. And his any interest that Jim has in an LLC can be transferred through his um, Texas probate. And then we won't have to do the Louisiana probate because Jim didn't own that in his name. Obviously things in a trust avoid all these ancillary probates. So what we're talking about here is when uh, Jim lives in the state and he owns real estate in his personal name in another state. So um, if you think this video brought you some value i'd like to see you smash the thumbs up button you can also share if you if you know people who own who live in one state and own property in another state and maybe even specifically louisiana make sure you hit the little share arrow and you can email and or text uh, this video to those others who might find it helpful okay very good we'll see you tomorrow y'all have a great day